I wanted to do a quick review on something that we discussed Friday in the morning, uh, excuse me, in the live trading room that I had noticed and specifically talking about the trend. Um, I wrote a little bit about it in the blog post this morning, but what I wanted to talk about was what we caught here while the market had a giant gap down after the weak jobs report on Friday. We actually had noticed that the trend was trending down. Now, the trend actually moves the opposite direction of the market, and the numbers that you really want to pay attention to are 1.2 and 0.8. Those are actually the numbers. Above this is considered bearish and below this is considered bullish. Uh, but what's actually more important is you can see that it starts to go sideways quite a bit during the day. Uh, and these numbers are what most people use. But what you actually want to pay attention to is the trend of the trend. So we actually noticed that it was trending down even right up until 11, 30, 12 o'clock. Um, and this is actually a leading indicator. So what happens is the trend moves very much like the VIX, but because this is actually upticking volume versus downticking volume versus upticking stocks versus downticking stocks, that's actually where this ratio comes in of 1.2 to 1. You know, 0 .0. Uh, point eight zero. So what we notice here is, and I think you should definitely print out the charter at the very least to understand uh, the setup. The trend of the trend, because it's price action and volume, when it's obvious, will always be the true direction and will also lead the market like it did on Friday. So if you could see what was going on here in the trend going down, let's let's just call it up until eleven o'clock. You can actually see that the spiders had the giant gap down. And as the trend was still going down here, we actually ended up getting a bounce. I think we noticed it like right around here at 1030 when the market was having a hard time um, staying down, but actually floating at the highs. So just before this happened, we were actually talking about it about a half an hour before that. Um, I don't know about you. I, I wouldn't exactly say I expected a big update on Friday. I certainly did not expect this. This is actually um, we had really good volume on Friday. We had an engulfing candle, took us right into resistance, and now we're actually opening higher. Um, I'd like to get your your uh, your input on what you believe, what you guys believe the move of the market is going to be today. I actually the the problem that I'm having right now with um, you know you guys know that I love to read the tape. We still only have one day's worth of price action, uh, which essentially means we're not. I keep going back to this because this is really the only recent price action where we had more than one day in a row. This is the kind of price action we'd like to see, or even these two days, we get two can see you get lower lows, lower highs, closes on the lows, and you would expect follow through. Now, obviously, we were down at major support here and we did not push through, uh, but this here is actually uh, one. One day of good buying coming out of a two-day trading range, essentially, and you can basically, you could also make a case that it's three, two out of three dojis the last couple of days. So essentially, what I'm saying is, you're still in the in the time. Let me actually drop down. You're still in trading mode where you are using today's opening price and the previous day's high and low. And it's actually uh, something interesting here. And, and the reason I'm pointing that out, and we'll actually get into this in a lot of the stocks that I want to use, because there's a lot of good stocks today where we can have this decision. You as a trader have to get to the point where you're deciding, am I trading with a lot of price action? Or, another, or, or I should say a lot of price action history in the direction of my idea? Or am I only trading the most recent time frame? And I'm, I'm going to give you a little... Um, uh, lesson, I guess, for lack of a better way of putting it, because it's very relevant right now. Most traders who are pure day traders, they will tend to look at just what's going on intraday. And you can see here I have the 20 and the 50 on this chart. Uh, if I'm day trading, I would usually actually be using the 10 and the 20. So I, you know what? Um, essentially what that would mean is, and let's just assume this is the 10 and the 20, they will literally be changing their trend intraday multiple times, only going off of the intraday trend. So essentially what, what that means and what translates into what we're doing right now, the longer the price history in the same direction as your idea, which in this case is an intraday long, the longer that price history, the more conviction you have and the less you will hesitate. And the reason I keep bringing that up is I want to show you a lot of the stocks from today that are lining up that are making, I, I wouldn't exactly say it's a tough call. Um, but it's a really good illustration of how you have to make the distinction between great ideas, which let's just call win, for example, a great idea. Everybody here can clearly see what the trend is doing here, and the daily candles are clearly 
in sync for a very, very long time in the stock, probably the entire year, actually more than the entire year, about a year and a half. Let's, let's call it going back to last. Actually, no, that would be a year back to last September. Um, but comparing that to something, let's say for argument's sake, like PXD here. All right, let me zoom out a little bit. Um, clearly, we're in a downtrend since May, maybe even April. Uh, the most recent price action, and again, we actually had two different areas that this happened. We have this box right here. So basically, we have a downtrend, but then we go into a three-week trading range. And now we actually have another trading range, and we just, which is basically a five-week trading range, and now it just happened to broke out on Friday. So essentially what I'm telling you is as you're at your own, at your own seat, as you're, as you're managing your own positions, it's critical for confidence and ex expectation for follow-through. And again, expectation for follow-through is nothing more than what are the odds I think my profit target's going to be hit versus my stop loss. So now you build an argument for that to happen. This is a tough situation right here to say, I fully expect this to follow through because not only are you still in a longer term downtrend, but prior to the downtrend, you're only in three weeks, three to five weeks worth of a trading range. So essentially what I'm trying to get across here is you are only trading with Friday's price action, which again, was pretty good. Obviously good volume, probably more than double, and it has a $5 average true range. But this is uh, one of a lot of stocks that we're going to take a look at here to help you make that distinction. How confident should I be in this decision? And that's really what you want to take out of this. I'm just going to type that in there. Does everybody see what I'm talking about there? So I know it's, um, there, there's a lot of questions about technical analysis and how to do it and reading the levels and whatnot. Um, but this is a really good way to basically look at a stock very quickly, both using a weekly chart with no indicators and then digging into the most recent price action compared to what happened yesterday. Now I want to talk about another one that I can show you that actually lines up very, very well where there should be a very high confidence level to have a, uh, um, an opinion on what you think you're going to do today. So now we have a much longer term downtrend. So there's a longer term order flow that's obvious. The shorter term order flow is in the right direction, meaning the 20 is below the 50. And now the last three to five days, we have a really nice pullback into resistance. So you have long term order flow that's obvious, short term order flow with the moving averages, and the last price action is very, very clear. So this is a very, very big difference from the stock that we just looked at, PXD to go into the day saying I have a lot of conviction. Uh, John, what time frame are you talking about the daily? You're talking about from here to here? Basically from there to there? I actually agree with you. This is because when we push down this here pullback should have technically retraced down here. And I absolutely believe that from here to here is a higher low. But what we need to do is we need to pull ourselves out of just this because the fact that we went into a trading range after this new low um, puts us into breakout mode as opposed to now we're trading a direction. That's essentially the point that I want to get across. I absolutely agree that this is a higher low. But prior to this higher low, we had five weeks of basically nothing. Okay, so. Um, it's actually a good point because I actually wasn't looking at that. I was more focused on this, but you're absolutely right. We should have pushed down. We didn't push down and we went into a trading range. So very much the same way that we look at uh, inside days or even inside candlesticks to time entries, you're, you're essentially saying I am looking at the price action in a different way. So what I want to try and make sure everybody does is gets very, very comfortable with recognizing whether or not you are trending or whether the most recent price action is consolidating because the difference between the two is going to dictate what trading entry you take and how confident you are in that entry. So um, I, guess, I guess the question is then, even if we consider this to be price action that's bouncing out of this longer term downtrend, which we'll call, let's say, from April down to here, this would technically be the first day out of that trading range. So again, we want to talk about conviction level. This could be the first confirmation that this trend is over. However, this is the very first day. Could you trade the stock long today? Yes, you absolutely could. But remember, you're not trading with any price history in your favor other than this and the fact that we made a higher low here. So you're absolutely right. So I guess the question is, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much would you consider that a good long today? And then actually, we also have to take into consideration the fact that 
uh, we're kind of at resistance that we just broke through. So um, I like the idea long as a day trade. I don't like the idea long to say I have longer term order flow. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's essentially what I'm saying. You need to put the pieces together to say whether or not I love this idea and there's more room to go or, and again, you can draw this here or here, either way. Uh, a lot of people put it at the extremes. I think we've been spending a lot of time putting it at the actual body. I, I don't think either one is wrong technically. Quite honestly, it's just a question of what you like to use. Um, but th this is exactly the point that I wanted to get across. There is a very big difference between this chart and feeling conviction uh, and the other chart that we were looking at to – I'm sorry, I just got a – text message from somebody trying to get in the room. I apologize. Um, and this one here, Oop, OXP. Okay. XPO, I'm sorry. I'm trying to multitask, I have to stop. So this clearly isn't a downtrend. You could definitely say we're trading with something and this is actually just a pullback in the order flow. The one that we were just looking at was not exactly the same thing. So now I actually want to take a look at something else, which is H&R Block. Now, this is actually kind of the same what we're looking at. It's just got a little bit extra to it because here's what's actually going on. Moving averages in the right order, but we are only trading with the last couple of months, breaking out to new 52-week highs. So here's what I'm looking at here. We are definitely trending higher. We're definitely making new highs. But the last three to five weeks has been in a trading range. Now, this is a much better trading range than what we just saw before, which was uh, at the bottom of a downtrend. This one is actually bucking the market, but the market's been actually very weak over the same, same time frame. So the point I'm trying to make here is this is still a trading range, but it's a trading range in the direction of the right order flow, and it's breaking out to new 52-week highs. So there's a very different perspective here. As a matter of fact, it actually broke out on Friday in good volume too. So they're, they're both – the point I want to make is they're both trading ranges – but where the trading range is happening is what's making it different. This one's in the, this breakout is in the direction of the, where it's already going, and the other one is actually not. So as you're building your ideas for your trades, you need to be able to make that distinction in what the trend is doing now, what the price action is doing now, and how yesterday's price action relates to how soon you want to get into the trade and how much conviction you want to have in the trade. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a few charts that essentially take a look at that and uh, point it out because there's a lot of stocks that meet the criteria that they're strong for the last week to 10 days, especially the last week because of the way the market closed on Friday, uh, but not necessarily in uptrend. So I want to go over a few of those stocks right now. Uh, obviously, if you guys have anything you want to make sure that you call out, um, please call them out first and I will stop whatever I'm looking at. So please call out your ideas. All right, so in the same vein of what we just talked about, JD, okay, very, very similar to what we are just looking at, clearly in a downtrend, clearly the short-term price action. Again, breaking out of a trading range, but also saying what, what Joan was just saying before, we made a new low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. So definitely leaning towards breaking out to the upside, but now this is the first time price is above the 50-period moving average since beginning of August. Uh, it's also a 20-day breakout, so again, it is a new move or the first move in a new direction. So again, your conviction level should not be very high. It should be more of a day trade looking for follow through from Friday. Uh, next, we have Nike, which obviously we've been looking at for a while. And again, the criteria for these stocks are they've been strong for the last week, strong above the 20 period moving average, and closed 2% higher on Friday. So a lot of stocks closed higher on Friday, but they're not necessarily an uptrend. So we're going to make that distinction today to point out which stocks should be higher on your list versus which stocks should just be in a list as a day trade. Uh, and I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. The better you get at making the distinction between long-term obvious order flow and the most recent order flow, the easier it's going to be for you to be more consistent in your P&L. Uh, so obviously Nike meets all the criteria. It's been one of our strongest stocks for a while. SNDK, again, very similar to what we're looking at, a new higher low here. 
Um, and this is the first time, again, since August that the stock has been above the 50-period moving average and breaking this longer-term downtrend. So again, what would your conviction level be here? Obviously, it's just based on Friday, so that makes it just a day trade. So what does that mean? It means you're probably not going to be adding to positions, and you probably won't expect anything more than the average true range, which is around 220 here. All right, so I think that um, you get the idea. I want to make everybody make sure that you understand the difference between the two. So I want to go over some of the best ideas for today that make the most sense, uh, both on the long side and the short side, which uh, is what a lot of um, the feedback that we got last week was to make sure that we spent some time on best ideas, not necessarily all the ideas.